New vehicle inventory rises as 2025 models are hitting the lots. Automakers are adjusting course. Here's what it means for you if you're shopping for a car. Well, buckle up, friends, because the auto market's taking another twist. As the 2025 models start rolling into dealerships, we're seeing inventory levels steadily climbing. But don't let that fool you into thinking all is smooth sailing. But I do have to say that our hassle-free car buying service has been experiencing some very smooth sailing of late. Continuing on, the day supply dipped to 74 days, down slightly from early May, but it's still a whopping 43% higher than a year ago. So what's really going on? Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy. Joining me in studio to share this auto report and market update is the amazing Elizabeth. Thanks, big guy. Well, as Kevin said, the older models are finally moving off dealership lots just in time for the 2025 units to come rolling in. Dealers have been waiting for this, and boy, have next year's models arrived in force, more than doubling from where they stood in April. But here's the kicker. Even though there's plenty of inventory, the average listing price for new vehicles is still holding steady. The price tag, a cool $47,455, but let's not kid ourselves here. Affordability is unfortunately still out of reach for many people out there. May sales got off to a slow start, but as expected, the Memorial Day deals brought buyers out of the woodwork. That uptick in sales nudged the new vehicle day supply down by four days at the start of June. We're currently sitting at 2.9 million vehicles in total inventory, an increase of over a million from last year. That's 55% more than we were a year ago. It's difficult to imagine that the industry allowed this to happen. Not after hearing about all the discussions about strategy to keep inventory low and prices artificially high. It's unbelievable, but we are now knocking on the door of the 3.5 million level that we were at prior to the pandemic. Now, let that sink in. So now, what are the automakers doing? Well, they're scrambling is what they're doing because this fat inventory is creating a oh shit moment for manufacturers. (laughs) The plan had been to keep things low for a very long time, but as dealers can't resist trying to outdo each other... It seems that car manufacturers can't resist seizing an opportunity to squeeze ahead of their competitors as well. It's almost like a paternal father and son symbiotic relationship. The parent company, the manufacturer, has conditioned the mindset of the dealers over the years. That's exactly right. And that's the reason inventory has ballooned so much across the board. But that bulging inventory is raising eyebrows everywhere. For example, Ford's CFO, John Lawler, is talking about the need to balance production with demand. No surprise there, right? And over at GM, CFO Paul Jacobson is hinting at scaling back EV production for 2024. It's clear that while the inventory is stacking up, manufacturers are starting to get a little nervous and are already planning to adjust accordingly. On the high end of the inventory spectrum, the story hasn't changed very much. Stellantis brands are still leading the pack with some of the highest inventory levels in the country. I would even say their inventory is sky high. Totally. On the flip side, Toyota, Honda, and Lexus are managing to keep their inventory levels at about half the national average. They're playing it smart, keeping the supply lean, and that means more money paid by consumers for those cars. So let's talk about affordability for a second here. Buick is standing out as one of the more affordable brands right now with an average listing price of $32,689. they have got a decent supply of their 23 models left, but even their day supply of 71 days is below the industry average. Not too shabby overall. Then, of course, there's Ram, Jeep, and Dodge. These guys are sitting on a literal mountain of last year's models. Yeah. Dodge, in particular, is being swamped in older inventory, nearly 48% of what they've got on hand. Jeep and Dodge might be catching a little mini break for now, but with new models expected in September, their lots are going to get crowded very fast, too. Ram's already seeing new models roll in, but they're still holding on to about 6% of older units. No surprise that their day supply being more than double of the industry average. So where does that leave us? Well, despite all the inventory, prices are stabilizing, but nobody should get too excited or too comfortable. Affordability is still a big issue, especially with lower-priced vehicles being in very short supply. And with the Fed not giving any relief on interest rates, don't expect those prices to drop anytime soon. For now, it looks like incentives and discounts are here to stay, and they are likely to continue moving upward as we go further into 2024. So there you have it, folks. A market in flux with plenty of inventory, but not a significant amount of price relief for buyers just yet. Right. Keep your eyes on those interest rates and incentives because that's where the real action is going to be in the months ahead. Moving on to the used car market reports. Here's the latest from Mannheim, the largest auto auction house on the planet. Headlines read, Mannheim reports a drop in the August used vehicle value index. Meanwhile, wholesale prices are climbing. 
Wholesale prices edge up once again here in August. All right, friends, here we go. Mannheim's just released their August numbers, and it's more of the same story. Wholesale used vehicle prices are on the rise for the third month in a row. That brings the Mannheim used vehicle value index to a solid 124.3, marking a 2.1 increase from last year. Not too shabby, right? One key factor contributing to these price increases is the relative stability in the availability of credit, which is more critical than cost when determining market trends. Additionally, while wholesale volumes typically drive prices down, this hasn't been the case lately, suggesting that other factors such as the labor market conditions and credit availability are playing significant roles. Now, here's what's interesting here in the stability in wholesale prices, even as volumes rise. This is quite a contrast to the roller coaster ride we've been seeing in financial markets. But let's not get too comfortable. This calm in the used vehicle market might not last forever. The real test will come if and when our domestic economy starts feeling the pinch from international pressures. If that happens, all bets are off. Well, you know the pinch is coming. Yeah. Let's talk about the volume and price relationship for a second. Usually, higher wholesale volumes would push prices down, but we all know that usual doesn't always happen. In fact, when you run the numbers, a simple regression doesn't show a strong connection between volumes and adjusted prices. Sure, if you factor in the labor market and credit conditions, the volume starts to matter a bit more, but it's not a game changer. Bottom line, prices aren't just about how many cars are out there. It's more complicated than that. Now, here's where it gets more tricky. Credit availability. Not just the cost, but whether you can get your hands on it at all. Historically, we could use credit spreads as a proxy for availability, but thanks to years of near zero interest rates, the yield curve isn't giving us the same clues as it used to. Even with the Fed's rate hikes looming, the spread between the 10-year and 2-year Treasury notes is still wide, and it's probably going to stay that way. So don't count on the yield curve to give us an early warning about the next recession. It's not likely to happen. And friends, let's not forget it's that time of year when prices usually take a dip. I expect we'll be able to negotiate a ton of red-hot deals for viewers with our hassle-free car buying service here in the coming months. Starting in September and carrying on through November, we typically see the biggest seasonal drop in mix and mileage-adjusted prices. Historically, we're talking about an extra percentage point of depreciation in each of those months. And in all the international turmoil and our own American budget and debt ceiling debates adding to the uncertainty, this year should be no different. Now, rental risk pricing is an area to watch too. After a slump in July, rental risk auction prices bounced back in August, but they're still not where they were in 2013 and 2014. Average mileage on these units dropped to the lowest level since October, but auction volumes were down after a big surge earlier in the year. August saw a 3% drop in new vehicle sales to rental fleets, but they're still up 5% year to date. So while there's some recovery, it's a mixed bag. As for the market segments, it's the usual suspects leading the way. Pickups, SUVs, CUVs, and vans continue to see higher prices year over year. Midsize and luxury cars are up too, but that's compared to weak numbers from last year. Compact cars, on the other hand, are down 6.7% over this past year, so those buyers can expect to see a little relief. Finally, auction prices are up year over year for both commercially consigned and dealer consigned units. Average mileage on dealer consigned units is tracking just below last year's levels, which could keep prices from dropping too quickly. However, there are expectations of a seasonal decline in prices between September and November, as is typical for this time of year. This expected dip, along with ongoing international and domestic economic uncertainties, could impact the market in the near future. The market is also adjusting to lower inventory levels of newer used vehicles, particularly due to fewer leased vehicles returning to the market, which could keep prices elevated for some time. All right, friends, let's wrap up with this clear takeaway. The used car market is still holding strong with wholesale prices inching up for the third straight month, bringing the Mannheim used vehicle value index to 124.3. But don't get too comfortable. While prices are stable now, we've got the usual seasonal dip coming between September and November, which could shake things up a bit. As we mentioned earlier, credit availability is playing a big role here, keeping the market buoyant even as volumes increase. But remember, the market is sensitive to broader economic shifts, yes. especially with all the uncertainties on the horizon. So if you're in the market for a used car, stay sharp, keep an eye on those seasonal trends, and be ready to act when the timing is right. 
As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you found this update helpful, and we'll catch you in the next video with more insights on the ever-changing car market. As we mentioned earlier, keep an eye on credit availability and the seasonal trends because they'll be the ones to watch as we roll into September and head into the end of this year. Let's close out today's show with a brief update on our hassle-free car buying service. We continue to come out on top in negotiations with dealers on behalf of our viewers. Kevin? You know, I said this not long ago, out of all the things we've done to help car buyers, I'm talking about the entirety of the last 15 years of publishing videos. Our hassle-free car buying service is the best thing we've done for our viewers by a long shot. Our service offers nearly triple the savings as compared with competing services out there. Our service is also a ton faster. If people want to go slower, that's fine. But we have put people into a new car just 48 hours after they have contacted us. We can go that fast if you need it. If you're hearing about this car buying service for the first time, go to our website, thehomeworkguide.com, and read our detailed posting on what it costs and how it all works. The bottom line is this. If you're feeling intimidated or don't have time to fight with those car dealers out there yourself, just let us know. We're here to step in and help you. By the way, you should also know that our service is the only car buying service that saves you the hassle of negotiating with a finance officer. That's huge. We have that knowledge firsthand on other car buying services. It doesn't matter if you go with somebody like Costco or Car Edge, they are essentially the same. You don't really get the best deal, and to add insult to injury, you're still stuck with negotiating in dealer finance. And that sucks. And that, my friends, is by far the worst stop you'll ever make in a car dealership. We don't leave you to the mercy of people like that. We pre-negotiate and coach you through every single step. Thanks to all of you out there in our audience for coming back. We greatly appreciate your loyalty. To all of our longtime subscribers, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, the home of the only totally hassle-free car buying service. Signing off on behalf of the amazing Elizabeth and the entire Homework Guide team. Thanks for listening.